Hello everyone and welcome to this new series covering everything you need to know about the animation blueprints and the various animation uh, assets that you can have as part of your game's character. Now in this first part we're going to start with the introduction to the animation blueprint and state machines. So we're going to go through what a state machine is and just introduce you to it. We'll be going through it in a lot more detail down the line. But I just want to get you started looking at what states are and how we can use them. So let's get started. So an animation blueprint is a special blueprint that you assign to a skeletal mesh and it controls how a skeletal mesh animates based upon uh, information that is fed to it. Okay, So over the course of this whole entire series, we're going to cover as much as we can about the animation blueprint so you'd be a lot more comfortable using it to be put together for your characters. Now for the purpose of this tutorial series, I've brought in the Paragon character Revenant uh, to use, uh, which you can see here. And we'll be using his animations to put together our own custom animation blueprint. Now, it does come with its own animation blueprint already set up, but we're not going to use that. We're going to make one from scratch so you can see all the different things that go into making an work. So, first things first, we're going to go and I'm going to put it separate from the rest of his stuff. I'm going to put it over here just so it's easier for you to see what we're doing here. So, we can create an animation blueprint by going to the animation section on your add content uh, menu and you choose animation blueprint and you choose your skeleton for the blueprint. Now, a animation blueprint is tied to the skeleton. So if you've got two characters that are using the same skeleton, they can share the same animation blueprint. However, if the skeletons are different, then you're gonna have to retarget them and make them work. So we're gonna assign this to Revenant Skeleton. Okay. Revenant and him, we'll call it. There he is. And we can open it up. So animation blueprint consists of a few elements. Okay, so you've got two types of graphs. You've got an anim graph and you've got the event graph. The anim graph decides what the final output of the animation should be. Okay, so before this happens, all over here will be the blending uh, and mixing up of all these animations to get the desired outcome. That desired outcome is derived from values that we get from the event graph. So the event graph is like a normal blueprint graph where we can find information, store it as variables, and then use those variables to feed into the animation graph. Okay. And in the event graph, you get this one default event uh, update animation. This is essentially like a tick event. Um, and it constantly updates animation to what it should be each tick. Okay. Now, on the left-hand side, we've got the viewport where you can see the current pose, current animation of the character. And the bottom, we've got details about the blueprint. This includes things like variables, functions, macros, dispatches, all those sort of things. On the right-hand side, we've got a details panel. So if you're familiar with details panel, these are context-sensitive panels that change based upon what you're selecting at that moment in time. And at the bottom here, we've got an animation preview editor where you can turn on and turn off certain features so you can preview what the animation should end up looking like. But more on that as we get through it. So uh, we also, also, also have an asset browser. This is all the animations that are tied to that skeleton. So if you've made an animation that doesn't show up here, it's because it's not using the right skeleton. So do make sure that is correct. Okay, and all of these animations. And this is why we're starting off with a Paragon character because these do come with a lot of animations that we have a bit of fun with, okay? So, the first thing we're going to do today is we're going to look at a state machine. So go to the animation graph and you can create a state machine by searching for state machine. And create that. And your first one is going to be sort of the ground locomotion they may have. Okay. And we're going to open this up. And you open it by double clicking. It takes you inside of that state machine. And this is what it looks like inside the state machine when you first create it. It's got no states in it, nothing else in it. It's just this entry pin. And what you got to do is you're going to create various amount of states. So let's get idle just working in here, first of all. So on entry, you're going to drag out and you get a few options. We can create a conduit, a state and state alias. Don't worry, we'll be going through each of these in good detail so you know what each one does. Uh, we're going to start with a state. So go add state and we get to name it. We're going to name it idle. And inside there, we double click to go inside of it. And in here, we can use our idle. So you can search in our asset browser here for idle. And we've got a load of idles. Now, typically, naming convention wise, idle underscore AO, AO stands for aim offset. 
that will come in a future video. We'll talk about that in a lot more detail. Um, so we don't want the AO ones. We want ones that are not AO. And there's idle there doing its thing. So we're going to drag that out. And there's idle. And we'll plug that in. And go back using the back arrow up here. You've also got a breadcrumb trail. So if you want to go back to the animation graph, you can do. You need to feed yourself back into where you need to go. So it goes in for like, like almost like layers. So inside that ground locomotion, we've got this idle state going into it. And that's it. Okay. So I've hit compile. And then go back to animation graph and hook that into my output pose. Hit compile again. It will show his idle animation pose. Yeah. Pretty standard. And you can see here, we can see a, a line like these little dots going on this line. This just shows that where the animation is coming from. And it's been fed from the ground like uh, locomotion. Yeah. So normally, when getting started with your state machine, you want to start off with an idle state and a movement state. There you the defaults you can mostly have. It. Okay, it's very rare that you're doing anything else other than that. So you're going to have idle and you're going to have movement. Now movement can be handled via a blend space. More on that soon. But in between each state, you get this little icon up here. This is a transition rule. So this determines when it should go from idle to movement. And you go inside of it. And this is where you can set up the conditions for this transition. And so going from idle to movement essentially is, are they moving? Yeah, do they have some speed associated to them? And so what we can do is we can get the speed of the character, the velocity of the character, and work out from there what they're doing. So if I want to, I can go to variables and create a velocity. Or actually, I'll call it current velocity. There we go. And that's a bit of a vector. And I'm going to drag that out onto here. And I want to get a, the speed from the current velocity. And that's simple enough to do. You just drag out from here and do vector length. And that will give us the actual speed. So if you're going like 600 units per second, then you're going to get 600 come out of here. Okay. So what I'm going to do from here, drag that out and do is greater than zero and put that into my can enter transition. And that means it can then tra transition from idle to movement if this is true okay so go into here but as you can see there is no transition rule back so this arrow only goes one way it doesn't go both ways so we make, need to make a rule to go back to it so just drag another line from movement to idle and it'll create a second transition rule that's a weird little bug sometimes that you find happened in unreal 5 in that the little dot doesn't appear straight away just move it around or go back go back in and it'll appear yeah, it just sometimes happens the latest version of Unreal 5. So if that's uh, there now, we go into here. So what is the rule going from movement to idle? Well, the rule is going to be uh, we're not moving. Yeah, it's the opposite. So we're going to do exactly the same thing. We take out our velocity. And we see the vector length. And we just check if it is equal to zero. And now it will handle the transition from idle to movement. Now, at the moment, we don't have any animation in movement, as we'll cover blend spaces in the next part. But for now, let's just put in a simple movement animation. Uh, what will I call it? Walk, maybe? Let's have a look. No, oh, jog. There you go, jog. And we'll put jog forward in. Okay. that in. Power that. And that's all good. So... We've got that current velocity fed into it as a variable, but we actually haven't set anything up with that velocity. That is still zero, zero, zero. It hasn't changed nothing. We ain't done nothing. That's where the event graph comes in. So let's go over to the event graph. And on this update animation, because it's regularly checking, we want it to work out what the velocity is of the pawn that is controlling this actor, this uh, animation. And so this is why they give you this try get pawn owner. Now, the reason why it's a try get pawn owner is. Sometimes, not all the time, but sometimes the animation blueprint could spawn in before the pawn does uh, initiate. And that could cause some issues where it doesn't understand who owns the pawn. But this just catches it and makes sure it's valid before it does anything. So we get try get pawn owner and we just do a validation check. It's valid. And we're going to get the velocity from our pawn owner. So velocity. And we're going to set that to my current velocity. Okay. 
And this is where I'm going to show you now what the preview does. So if I go to preview editor, you see current velocity 000 now appears down here. If I change this value, you can see the animation is now going to change. Yeah. Like that, and there it goes. Yeah. Now, one thing we've noticed here is that he's stopping his animation. And that would be because inside the state machine, in the movement, this jog forward, it has loop turned off. So just go down, you'll find loop animation. I'm going to turn that on. Now, you'll loop that animation. So this is just a preview. It doesn't actually change any values, but doesn't change the defaults. It just allows you to so you can see what's going on over here. So hit that. Um, if I do zero, and I'll do apply that as well. Okay. So now to actually assign the animation blueprint to your character. So we go into our player character. So I'm going to go into Pat Revenant characters, heroes, and find the animation blueprint. No, sorry, to find the blueprint of your Revenant player character. And you assign an animation blueprint by going to the mesh, the skeletal mesh, and you'll see an anim class in the animation section. If you don't see this, make sure your animation mode is set to use animation blueprint. Then from the drop down for animation class, you just choose your one. Okay, that one. Save, and now got him idling. When I move, he does his move. So at the moment it looks pretty good for going forwards, but the thing that does break is if we go side to side and backwards and things like that. Um, so we're going to make that work a little bit nicer by using blend spaces and better smoothing between idle and uh, moving fast. And we're using blend spaces for that. So we'll do that in the next part. There you go. We've now covered what a state machine is. We're now there is obviously a lot more left to cover in the state machine, such as state aliases and conduits. We'll cover those in plenty of good time, so don't worry about that. Uh, but as I mentioned, we do need to cover blend spaces for our movement, as that's the most common way of handling blending of animation of a character's run in different directions. So you can watch the next episode right now over on patreon.com forward slash Ryan Laley, where your donation of just one dollar gets you access to all my videos early, plus access to our creator challenge a monthly series where you can submit a, uh, a, a entry into a challenge and try and complete a challenge all on your own without any help and it's a way of getting feedback from me and uh, you get a little prize at the end if you've done the best work so thank you so much to all the patreon members for their continued support in the channel and um, i'll see you all next time